let's just stop doing an unnecessary intervention because it's the way it's always been done. It starts with vitality. It starts with feeling great. That is your birthright. That is the goal every day. How do you want to live? Taking charge of your health. Don't wait to be rescued. It's your job. It starts with vitality. It starts with feeling great. That is your birthright. That is the goal every day. Anything that detracts from your energy, from your immune function, from your sense of vitality is bad. And that negative effect has to be contemplated. Conventional approach to evaluating an elevated PSA causes harm, period. It does damage to the prostate. It potentially spreads cancer cells. It does nothing to improve any symptom. The biopsy itself can lead to infection and hospitalization. The biopsy itself can damage erectile function and urinary flow. Let's just stop doing an unnecessary intervention because it's the way it's always been done. I'm going to talk about things you can do to maintain your vitality, to support your immune function, to fight prostate cancer like a man. Every conventional treatment increases risk. Radiation increases risk of cancer, damages the rectum, the bladder. Prostatectomy damages everything. So one of the ways that conventional treatments toward prostate cancer work is to delay the progression, waiting for you to die from something else while you slowly fade. Is there a better way? I believe there is. Can you do both? Maintain youthful vitality, strength, energy, virility, and fight cancer? I believe you can. So it starts out with the objective, the philosophy. How do you want to live? Using supplements, using nutraceuticals is a rational application of science, philosophy, and health support. Nobody would doubt that you have to eat well to live well. Well, what about nutraceuticals? The fact is, folks, some of these nutraceuticals have evidence of benefit, but you can't get all you need, all you would ideally benefit from through nutrition alone. That's why they exist. You can only eat so much broccoli and then it becomes a problem. Let's plow forward. Here are the supplements and the nutraceuticals that my research and clinical experience have guided me toward advising for you. This is to help sort out the noise. Your doctor may say, well, there's no proven benefit. Okay, fair enough. They don't do research on broccoli. Very little. It's hard to come by, but it's out there. And there's evidence of benefit. Most importantly, lack of harm, both together. Let's talk about broccoli powder, broccoli. Broccoli is a cruciferous vegetable that um, does correlate with lower incidence of cancer, people that eat lots of broccoli. I don't know if I can tolerate that much broccoli. In fact, I like the broccoli powder supplement. The supplement has a high amount of sulforaphane, an agent that has been shown turn on tumor suppressor genes. I kind of like that. I kind of like that it doesn't give me gastrointestinal side effects like broccoli can. And the studies have shown evidence of its benefit decreasing the rate of PSA elevation and cancer cell growth. That's kind of cool. I'll take that. Now, the dose for that, by the way, 500 milligrams a day of broccoli powder. If you like broccoli, then three half cups per week is correlated with some benefit. You can certainly do both, which is what I usually recommend if you tolerate it. Diindelmethane is a component within cruciferous vegetables, and that has been correlated with lower incidence of cancer risk. Hard to get to the levels that appear to be most helpful in blocking cancer cell synthesis. Those levels are up to 300 milligrams a day. And by virtue of adding that in, it can have a synergistic effect. Synergism is when you combine things together to get a bigger benefit than you can by doing individual components. It is a foundational aspect of Asian and Ayurvedic medical practice where you get lots of stuff, put it together, and look at an outcome. 
Western medicine doesn't like that so much. We like to isolate the variable, right? The scientific method, control all the other variables and look at the one thing. Suppose it isn't one thing. Suppose fighting prostate cancer is more analogous to a, an internal combustion engine. Whereas all the components work together, but you take one piece out and it ceases to function. I believe synergism is an asset when fighting cancer and supporting our health. But you've got to be thoughtful about total volume. You can only swallow so much. Thus, we isolate, not isolate, but we identify those elements that have greatest merit. One of those other elements is lycopene. Lycopene is found in red fruits and vegetables, specifically in tomato, a high amount of lycopene. And there are some studies correlating people who eat lots of tomatoes with lower incidence of prostate cancer. The lycopene has anti-inflammatory attributes, been correlated with um, decreased death from cancer. That is, in a study published in Frontiers in Nutrition 2025, they looked at blood levels of lycopene and they found a correlation. Higher amounts of lycopene in the blood correlated with a lower incidence of prostate cancer death. More lycopene in the blood, less prostate cancer death. All right, that's pretty straightforward. No harm in lycopene. There is no toxic dose. You can't take too much. I mean, I suppose if you ate too many tomatoes and it made you get fat, growing adiposity, as you know by now, it's bad for cancer in general and really bad for prostate cancer in particular. The uh, lycopene also downregulated the prostate cancer growth, and it correlated with apoptosis of cancer cells, killing them. Very cool. So where does that lead us? The amount of lycopene in a plum tomato, those are the ones that they make tomato sauce with, uh, the contadina tomato, like that. You can eat it like a fruit. After all, it is a fruit, and it has about five milligrams of lycopene. Very good. And it also has other elements. I told you about synergism. All supplements are drawn from food sources. The food sources have other things in them that may add to their potential benefit. So while I advocate supplements to get super high dosing that you can't get through the food alone, I like to complement it. Add in the food if you can. So a plum tomato, I like to try to eat one every day. Part of my prostate cancer, prostate health regimen. In the supplement form, doses between 15 and 45 milligram per day have been studied and correlated with benefit. No harm in it, folks, so you can add lycopene with confidence. Another aspect of getting older and fighting any chronic illness, including cancer, it's controlling free radical overload. Think of free radicals as little splinters jabbing into the cells, right? They're irritants causing harm. And as we get older, we make more of them. Our body develops its own antioxidants to try to help neutralize the overabundance. But it has trouble keeping up as we age and in the face of chronic illness. Every cancer and every chronic disease has a free radical overload. In fact, that, folks, is how a lot of chemotherapy and radiation works. It works by creating a cytokine storm, a free radical burst. That's why they're so damaging to cells. That's why people lose their hair and get sick, because the effect is global. It's carpet bombing. It's burning the village to save the town. Now, in the setting of prostate cancer, none of that has merit. All of it causes harm. What we want is balance, neutralize the excessive free radicals. Glutathione is one of the most important antioxidants the body makes. You make tons of it. It detoxifies, removes heavy metals, neutralizes free radicals. It's a wonderful element to have within your body. However, we start to lose our ability to make enough of it. One of the rate-limiting steps of making glutathione is NAC, N-acetylcysteine. That is one of the components the body needs to make glutathione. You can't really take glutathione as an oral supplement. It does not absorb very well. You're better off taking the precursor, NAC. 600 milligrams, up to 3,000 per day has been advocated. 
in order to give your body the material it needs to make all the glutathione it wants to make. And because the demand on glutathione will vary depending on your circumstance, it's rational to increase your NAC dose at times of high stress. You're out too late last night. You had a few drinks. You uh, are battling an illness. You know, you want to have an elevation of the antioxidant neutralization. One caveat is there are times where you want free radicals to be doing their work. And one of those times is when you are in any kind of active chemotherapeutic regimen for other cancers. Now, I never would advocate chemotherapy for prostate cancer. I think it's a terrible idea. Evidence of benefit is scant. Evidence of harm is abundant. So stay away. All right, that's NEC. How about pomegranate? Has a big reputation for benefit with the prostate, and there is some support for that. But be careful of pomegranate juice, folks. Juice is concentrated sugar. Concentrated sugar grows fat. Fat grows cancer cells. Can you see the connection here? So no matter how good it looks on paper, if it's a juice, got to be careful. I don't like my patients to be drinking juice, period. All juices are concentrated sugar. Even if it is organic greens, concentrated sugar. Better off eating the product itself. In the case of pomegranate, better off taking it as an extract rather than drinking it as a juice. 400 milligrams a day. One study has shown that it can help to decrease the rate of progression of PSA. Not a ton of research and evidence regarding preventing progression of cancer itself but that which supports a reduction in the rate of PSA increase is a welcomed consideration. You got pomegranate, dienylmethane, lycopene, NAC, broccoli powder, putting them together in a sustainable fashion. Continue your reflective research. Be mindful of dose amounts. If you're adding a supplement off the internet, a lot of times there are other elements thrown in there partly to make it look good, partly because of their own sort of research pathway. These are the things that have the greatest amount of support, the greatest amount of evidence. Back to this topic once more, in order to complete our list of the most validated, highly researched and micronutrient supplements and nutraceuticals that I recommend. Taking charge of your health, it's your job. Don't wait to be rescued right? The government, the FDA, the big pharma, the hospitals, the subspecialist, they're not coming through that door anytime soon to make you feel great and support your vitality. They're waiting for disease to happen so they can react after the fact. I want you to be thinking proactively. Disregard the conventional barriers. Yeah, they're out there, but we're aspiring to live differently. I'm aspiring to live differently, age differently, fight cancer differently, not surrendering vitality at any point. You go out marching vertical straight up, men. Look forward to our next conversation. Thanks for spending time with me.